And then let's look at a broken hand. What does a broken hand speak of? It speaks of your works and your ability to handle things. Listen to Jeremiah 2.8. It was the priests. They never even said, where is the Lord? Can you imagine? The priests are supposed to be the ones that's interceding in an intermediary between God and the people. They didn't even know God was gone. Remember the church of Laodicea in Revelation 3? Here they are worshiping and having a service, and the Lord is outside standing on the door knocking. And they're going, leave us alone. We're having church. They don't even know he left. This is the problem if you have a broken hand. Look at 2 Corinthians. Well, let me go back to Jeremiah 2.8. The priest didn't say, where is the Lord? They never knew he was missing. And then it says, those who are handling the Torah didn't even know me. It's like the judges. How many of you know there's a lot of judges that don't handle the law correctly? And even it says the pastors, right here in Jeremiah, the pastors also transgressed against me and the prophets prophesied by Baal and walked after things that don't profit. So, in God's eyes, we have a broken hand if we're, if we're handling his word deceitfully. Look at 2 Corinthians 4.2. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commend ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. So we have to realize we have to properly understand the Torah, the word of God, so we're not handling it deceitfully how we want to manipulate people. Now, this is one of the scariest verses in the Bret Hadashah, which means the new covenant. In Matthew 7, 21, 22, it says, not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord is going to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Only those who do the will of the Father, which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name, cast out devils. And in your name, done many wonderful works. And he's going to say, I don't even know you. Why? I mean, how many of you know the Jews do not prophesy in that name? Islam does not prophesy in that name. Only Christians do. Mostly Pentecostals. You're not going to see the Lutherans or Nazarenes or Baptists doing that. And God is going to say, I don't even know you. The difference here, do you remember the seven sons of Sceva? Okay. He goes, hey, uh, you know, uh, they're trying to cast out a demon in the name of uh, Paul, you know, uh, Yeshua, the, you know. And the demons jumped all over him. Here he's casting out devils in that name, but he's name dropping. He has no relationship. This is something uh, Danny Ben-Gigi, who is a professor of Hebrew language, uh, and I are real good friends. And I was at his place the other day. We're working on this new, better translation. Many of you are familiar with a verse that says, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But the word reads, English is a horrible language to study the Bible in. You really need to know Hebrew. And the amazing thing about that word, it shouldn't be translated to resist. When you think of resistance, you're thinking of something that's kind of defensive. But the word really is this. And it has the word panaim, face. It says, when you submit yourself to God, now go confront the devil, get in his face, and he'll flee from you. That's a totally different translation. It, it's, we're, resisting the devil, it's more than that. It's confronting him. It's getting in his face. And then he'll run from you. So this is why English isn't great. As a matter of fact, look at Titus 1.16. It says, people that are professing they know God, but in their works they deny him, being abominable, disobedient, and unto every good work to now reprobate. They, turn, they do the word of God, but it's so that they may be glorified, not so that he may be glorified. That is the difference. <clears throat> and then uh, we'll finish up. I'll just go real quickly over some of these other ones. It's also if they have a hunched back, I believe that means they're loaded with the cares of this world. A dwarf or a midget, they're perfect in form and function, but they're operating much below the standard. Like uh, Paul said, Rabbi Shaul said, you know, man, you're still on milk. You need to be on some meat. 
And I believe most of the congregations around here are on milk and cookies. They don't get any meat and potatoes. I'm serious. That's why a blemish in the eye it talks about. Okay? Well, how many of you know that is a distorted vision? How many of us have a distorted vision? Look what's going on in Israel right now. How much, how much of the Christianity is siding with the Palestinian movement because they have distorted vision? We have to have a good vision and have discernment to know we're supposed to side with Israel. Then scurvy. What in the world does scurvy? Do you know what? What is scurvy caused by? A lack of fruit in your life. And we're supposed to be producing fruit. But anyway, so when you look at the Torah and you apply it in a different direction, you can see what it can mean to us today. 